Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. In today's episode, we are going to be discussing men's skin care tips. Now, also the ladies are going to get a lot out of this episode, but there is a third element here. This is a couple's dynamic. This is a team-based approach with you, your partner, and your family to look at how you care for your skin and how you live in your homes and offices in a very specific way. Now, my heart goes out to the gents. Every time I do a one-on session for a gentleman, they really are just simply using a bar of soap in the shower, the same bar of soap that they use for down there as they use for their face, which is not a good idea because of parasites and other things, bacteria. So yes, I do recommend using a separate facial cleanser just for the face. Now, what's interesting with the ladies is that from a very young age, we are basically told you need to use this product, you need to use this makeup brand to actually look beautiful due to very sophisticated branding and marketing. What's happened with our generation with the whole beauty situation, it's become big beauty. And what it's done is it's drive consumerism. The beauty industry is a multi-billion dollar industry with rejuvenation also now becoming very cookie cutter in a lot of clinics. So what does this mean for the guys? They'll go online and they will look at very female focused content. And a lot of the guy stuff out there, it's using hippy dippy products and it's not necessarily actually going to speak to their needs. Now, the number one skin question I get all the time from my clients over the years is what do I do about the eyes? The eyes are the first area of the face to show signs of aging. This was actually why I wrote my very first research article. Well, to backtrack, it was also to create awareness for side effects from certain rejuvenation procedures, such as tear trough fillers. Given my background from 2011 with over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures, with an emphasis in the subspecialty of oculoplastics, whenever there was an issue from someone having eye rejuvenation, guess what they would come? They would come to the oculoplastics office. So truly, I got sick and tired of seeing all these dear people have issues like swelling, blockages of lymphatic drainage, and migration of the filler, as well as the Tyndall effect. So just because you see something trendy on social media, and tear trough fillers were very popular a number of years ago. In fact, when I would go and teach other providers, new injectors, they would initially want to learn tear trough filling. So what did I do? I wrote a paper to create awareness of the various issues because most clinicians didn't know that they were losing their clients to another clinic to fix the issue that they created. So that's why I wrote that paper. Now with the eyes, the skin around the eyes is very delicate. It's as thin as an eggshell. So that's why it shows signs of aging first, not to mention over 10% of all skin cancers actually occur in the delicate eye area because of the angle and direction on the sun to the brows, the eyelids, the tops of the cheeks, and the nose. Hugh Jackman actually came out a few years ago to talk about how he had a skin cancer removed on the tip of his nose. So when it comes to the guys, when it comes to the ladies, what we want to do is focus on our skincare foundations. It's not about purchasing this gimmicky eye cream or going for the latest rejuvenation option out there that really truly hasn't stood the test of time. In my career, I've really noticed that it takes about 78 years for something to be used on the masses for practitioners to actually see the long-term impacts. We've seen this with body contouring technologies as well, with the second or third generation getting much better because the first generation led to bumps and nodules and all sorts of things. So rejuvenation procedures get honed with time, how much product to use, how it's applied, as well as with energy types of technologies, they get honed and they get tweaked. It really takes time to use something that's an injectable procedure or laser procedure or a surgical procedure to really get honed in. Now, when it comes to the jawline, this is the second area that I hear the most requests around learning about. What options can be used? from skincare to microneedling at home, to in-clinic lasers, to surgery, to non-surgical injectables for jawline. Well, good news for you. I also wrote 
a jawline research article because a few years ago there was an injectable that came on the market, deoxycholic acid. And what this did was it was actually injected into the double chin area and it told fat cells to die. It told the fat cells to undergo a process called apoptosis. That actually is what debris in the air also does to the skin. It tells the keratinocyte stem cells to die. Now, what I mean by what's in the air are particulates, primarily heavy metals and other toxins and even mold. That's why cleansing is so key. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Keep that skin clean. Don't use that same bar of soap you're using on your privates, on your face and around your eyes. Hello, pink eye. Don't even get me started on that one. When it comes to the jawline, there's lots of options. And this is also another example of a relatively new to the market rejuvenation option that required a number of sessions and you would look like a bullfrog. You would have so much swelling under your jawline for about a month, three weeks to a month. And then in conversations that actually determined that launch for that product from that company was actually a huge flop. I actually heard it from an internal source. Very interesting. So again, another example of something for the jawline that's new to the market, but doesn't stand the test of time. So I wrote a research paper talking about options that, yes, have been utilized since the 90s, specific products, and how for a fraction of the price and essentially no downtime, I was able to achieve a reduction of the jowls as well as a tuck to under the jawline. So the eyes, the jawline are some of the primary concerns that men come to me seeking insights for. And one of the reasons why my virtual consultations have been so helpful for gentlemen is because it's very intimidating to go into a clinic when they know nothing about even the basics of skincare and what options are available. And so this is, I've really listened to my male clients over the years and seen some of the common trends. They don't have any insights into a basic skincare protocol, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub, or customization of products that are free of parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances, and not tested on animals. It is about using products that work, that are also free of the toxins that we want to avoid. That's why when I see a lot of products that are marketed primarily to men, they don't necessarily have a lot of actives in them or a formulation that's been researched and developed that's been on the market for a couple of years. Now, the other thing with guys is they often tend to go towards the bright, shiny object syndrome. They're doing the best that they can. However, they see new products coming out with these new antioxidants and new peptides. I'm here to tell you that since I started in the industry in 2011, I've seen peptides the whole time in the game. However, a couple of years ago, especially in the biohacking space, peptides was this whole new thing. And oh my goodness, look, there's a couple skincare brands that are in that space that are using peptides. So there's been some really sophisticated formulations that I've worked with for well over a decade that use things like Argyroline, Matrixyl 3000, nice, nice and a mind, and various other peptides. Copper peptide, for example, has been in my world for a very long time. So again, you don't want to go to the bright, shiny, brand new products to hit the market that really don't have a sophisticated formulation behind them. They might be expensive. You probably have to use a lot of the product to actually get enough of it on the skin to do its thing. And really is it giving you the long-term results that you're after. The other really interesting thing for guys is that they don't like a lot of pain. So here's the interesting thing here. Women are used to touching their faces from a young age. You probably had a facial bot for you in your teens because of acne and things like that. So women are used to actually having others touch their faces. For the guys, not so much. So when it comes to rejuvenation, there's various options on the market for pigmentation, sunspots, age spots, broken capillaries, even hair removal for the beard and neck area to help with things like ingrown hairs, not to mention reduce the need for shaving quite as often. So very interesting that there are lots of options out there, but it's hard for the men to know what to do about it. And for the ladies, same thing goes for you too. But when a couple in a team-based relationship looks at their skincare and looks at their rejuvenation plan and journey together, that's actually when you're going to have the best success. 
because you both have shared values of looking your best. Then add the health stuff to it, reducing oxidative stress, eating the right foods, exercising, maybe going to church together and having great communities with other couples are also really key layers that I've seen be employed by my most successful clients and myself. And these are also key determinants of health, form your community and also healthy dynamics in a relationship of shared values and also reinforced boundaries. If one person looks after their skin, but another person in the partnership doesn't, that's actually going to tell the other person that is caring for their skin and the person that isn't, that they don't care about the way that they look and present. Same thing with eating well and working out. This is a whole other dynamic in the relationship. So when it comes to beautification and rejuvenation in a partnership, you're going to have the best results when both of you are sharing your products. Leave your skincare out on the counter for your, your loved one and say, hey, here's a great cleanser to use. Here's a great eye cream to use. Here's a great moisturizer or sunscreen. Use this scrub in the shower. Hey, let's do our dermal rolling together. I love to teach this stuff. And having worked with many men over the years, they don't know where to start. They get overwhelmed, but they do want to make great decisions and use products that aren't going to interfere with their hormones and things like that. Now, the other thing that I find is oftentimes my male clients will listen to influencers online. And one of the bones I have to pick with a lot of dermatologists, especially on YouTube, is they're recommending very toxic products. But the reason they do that is to talk about easy to access and affordable products. But when I work with gentlemen that say are using a CeraVe product, that product has two parabens in it and preservatives that we don't want. So it's just really interesting with a lot of the free information that's out there. Sure, some of it can be helpful, but others might actually be damaging to your health over time. And this is just simply a lot of the culture around the in the dermatology space online is to recommend products that are easy to access for the general population at a good price point. But is that the highest information that you could possibly receive? Not necessarily. That's why I love to take time with my male clients in a one-on-one -on -one session to really break down the basics and then provide that ongoing support, as well as in my tutorials. I have lots of men that join my tutorials to learn how to do their skincare application, using their hair care, growing their hair back. What does the biohacking for skin stuff look like? As well as my dermal rolling tutorials that I don't teach anywhere else. Now, the other layer to this that I'm seeing a lot of men grappling with is in their relationships, their woman is very masculine. They're taking care of everything around the house. It actually feminizes them. <laughs> or if they're single, they're having a hard time finding balanced psychologically ladies to date. However, if the, the man is single, they of course want to project their best version out. They want to feel confident in their own skin, take care of you know, skin issues on the back, on the backside, breakouts, bumps, ingrowns, all sorts of things. So this is really my passion to help you become a more conscious consumer and get a high level of information. That's why I don't recommend following influencers on skin, skin stuff that aren't actually skin experts themselves. So always use your discernment when you are choosing to watch a YouTube video or listen to a podcast. Do you think that that person who's making that also has shared values to you with wanting to use products that are as clean as possible while still delivering results? Not to mention that a lot of times those easy to access over-the-counter products are then dropped with a link to Target. So that that uh, YouTube creator talking about the skin products gets affiliate kickbacks from it. So there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes in regards to the information that you or, you know, you, you yourself as a man or as a lady are going to be getting. Now, when it gets back to pain with rejuvenation, yes, some energy based laser technologies are going to be a little bit painful. However, there's numbing creams that can be used. But really, when you prepare your skin ahead of time with your skincare, with your at-home peels, with your at-home dermal rolling, you're going to be sort of desensitizing the sensory receptors on your face. So that's very specific to men. However, when it comes to ladies, I also recommend 
that you do your heavy lifting at home as much as possible with your skincare, with your peels, with microneedling at home, as well as living a low oxidative stress lifestyle with purifying your air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, eating the right foods for you. If you haven't yet done the Viome gut test or their full body health intelligence test kit, that's a great place to start for about 170 bucks. You can actually get an analysis on your stool to see which foods are right for you to eat at this time. There is a bit of an overlap with a blood type nutrition as well. However, what this test looks at is how to eat for you at this stage in the game, looking at the epigenetics and how your DNA is expressing itself in the gut and what your body needs at that time. So it's an additional sophisticated layer on how to eat well, and of course, move that beautiful body of yours. So the other thing with some rejuvenation options, not only pain, but there's also redness and men do not want to have a red face. Okay. They don't want to use oftentimes a heavy cream. They don't want to feel like there's something on their skin. They don't like pain and they don't want to be red for very long. So when you're doing this prep work ahead of time, reducing oxidative stress, doing a really good customized skincare routine that I've laid out for you, you actually are very likely to experience faster recovery. And I've seen this in a number of my clients over the years, where typically after a resurfacing session to reduce pore size, to reduce acne scarring, to promote collagen and elastin, get that skin thicker. I've actually seen people recover in about half the time, which is pretty cool. So that's what led me down the path of biohacking and oxidative stress. I was actually seeing how fast some people recovered not to mention also because they were doing a lot of the heavy lifting at home, they had a really good, solid, consistent skincare routine and foundations at home, as well as some advanced things. They also required fewer rejuvenation options. So in my latest paper on oxidative stress status and its impacts on skin aging, I actually share this very algorithm. So it's research is out there. It's open source. Definitely read it. Starting from your home care, reducing oxidative stress, and moving from least invasive to most invasive. One of the things I will say, if we're talking about most invasive, that's going to be surgery. Eyelid surgery is one of the most common surgeries performed, that and rhinoplasty. So instead of looking for a gimmicky eye product gadget that you use at home, sometimes, sometimes an upper eyelid surgery or lower eyelid surgery is actually going to be the most economical and time-saving option. I've seen loads of clients over the years invest in certain types of rejuvenation technologies as well as injectables, but it really doesn't actually give them what they're hoping for. So sometimes the surgical option is actually what's going to be providing the result you're after as well as more longevity and be less expensive. So these are all various topics that are covered in a one-on-one -on -one session where I'm very honest with you of what options are available and what is going to be in alignment with your budget and lifestyle. And of course, this isn't medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. One of my other passions is actually teaching other doctors and nurses. And also I've pretty well got my hands on some of the top lasers out there. And it took me about three years to do just this. So I'm very familiar with technologies that are out there and also which clinics are great, which providers are great, which is also shared in a one-on-one -on -one session. Now, the other piece to this is not only doing great skincare and healthy living to look and feel great, it's also the deeper layers, the body, mind, spirit, and energy practices to allow you to become your most radiant version. You can become more beautiful and more radiant and more attractive through your aging process. Some of the most attractive people that I've seen are actually aged 60 to mid 90. And I talk about certain case studies in my audible radiance, the new skin science. If you haven't yet listened to my audible, I warmly invite you to do so. This is where I really share my radiant transformation journey. Some of the things I did, including a long fast in the desert at altitude and a lot of the behind the scenes things that I practiced and I was able to reap the reward of beauty and radiance. And I'm very honored and blessed and grateful that this is what I get to teach. This is my lot in life. I get to help you become your most beautiful and radiant version. So yes, there are some 
various behind the scenes practices that I do with detoxification, with energy technology, with frequency, as well as other things that are maybe a little bit too woo for me to talk about publicly, but they made a massive difference in my life as well as many others in the whole process of becoming our healthiest, our most beautiful, and our most radiant version. When you're doing the inner work, when you're laying the foundational work down and you're consistent with it, your beauty and enhanced skin, hair growth, and nail growth, as well as your body composition, honestly, in my experience, are inevitable byproducts of making great decisions all the time, as well as being the best relationships possible and being very careful about the people that you're around and how to navigate and negotiate through life in a way that, you know, life is easy for beautiful people. We've all heard that, but life is full of more grace and ease for radiant people. That's something that is a trend that I've seen since really looking at people that don't need as much rejuvenation. They respond really well and they just seem happier in general. They're not trying to fill a void with looking like someone else on social media. They are really happy with themselves and they're happy with who they are, what they've done, their family life, and they do have body, mind, spirit, and energy practices. So there's so much to know, but this is a episode kind of geared to the gentlemen. Ladies, I'm sure you're going to listen to this as well. Share this with your male counterparts, your friends, your family to help inspire them because there's a lot of great resources out there for guys, but I would say that there's more not so good resources for guys. And sometimes guys can think, oh, this, you know, skincare and rejuvenation stuff, it's a little too feminine. Uh, however, the skin is the largest organ of the body. Skin cancers are a very real thing. And if you neglect the skin, what happens is over time, you could get riddled with precancerous skin lesions like actinic keratosis. These are red flaky areas that come and go. And oftentimes in that situation, someone will have to go back to their doctor to have those areas liquid nitrogened off every month. And then they're left with an area of redness for a number of weeks. So skin cancers are very real. They can start, they can metastasize throughout the body. So it's really my aim to help you shift your perspective on skin rejuvenation and beautification to actually caring for the largest organ of your body and really helping to support your confidence so that you can build your community and have an excellent relationship with yourself and others. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode on the School of Radiance podcast. Head on over to theschoolofradiance.com where you can find some of my favorite products, my favorite biohacking tools, read my research, and of course, book your one-on-one, -on -one, join my skincare tutorials, and for that cherry on top approach for the behind the scenes things that I do that have made a massive difference in the way that I look and I feel, that's all shared exclusively in the School of Radiance membership. Email me if you have any questions from today's episode. If you have any podcast topic requests, I would love to hear from you. You can find me at info at theschoolofradiance.com. Have a beautiful high vibe rest of your day, everybody. You are on the right track. Live, even just listening to this episode, you've made a good choice for today to fill your mind with something that's positive, that's helpful, and that's also informative on your personal journey to look and feel your best. I'll see you again very soon right here on the School of Radiance podcast.